monkey and the elephant. They were neighbors, but they didn't visit each other often. Until recently. The monkey liked shiny and new. Things needed to move fast. Every year, the newest toys, because, well, last year's toys were broken. But all this fun comes at a price. Vulnerabilities. Bugs. <laughs> but monkey doesn't care. Monkeys like grooming. But you know what? Elephants are much more serious than that. And you know why? They stay awake all the time because they're focusing on uptime. Uptime, uptime. Availability 24-7. They don't need new toys. They need things to work all the time. And they have much, much longer life cycle than the monkeys. Some say they are out of date. Some say they are even obsolete. Yeah, but the elephant has been around for a while. Let's go back to the birth of the elephant. The first ICS, industrial control system, dates back to Paris, 1746. This is Jean-Antoine Nolet, the abbot of a monastery and a scientist. And he wanted to find out the speed of this new phenomenon called electricity. So he devised an experiment. He called in 200 of his monks, and connected them to each other with iron rods, made a nice circle, and then grabbed a battery. Now, batteries in those days were not like the batteries we have today. They would discharge with one big boom. And this was a rather large battery. So you guess what happened next? Nolet connected the battery to the first monk. And from the shouting and convulsing and puking of the monks, he concluded that, yes, electricity travels pretty fast. So this little system with its electricity, with its commands, with its feedback system, could be seen as the first MCS, monk control system. The king of France wanted to be in on the fun and asked if Nolet could repeat the experiment in the palace. But the monks refused. They wanted to go back to their monkey business. in the royal guards to do the experiment. And we all know that not long afterwards came the French Revolution. The elephant. The elephant is much more careful. He adapts very slowly. So it was quite of a surprise that he realized that he could have the monkey disease. And when he gets the monkey disease, it's have very big impact. We'll give you three examples. The first example is electricity, the power grid. In late December 2015, it was not the Santa Claus that come to the energy company and two others that I cannot pronounce. They got hacked, and they had 30 substations knocked off the grid for three hours. Yes, only three hours, because they could manually switch on them, which I doubt that most of us others could do. It was a classical phishing email, and they were getting in. And even though the computers were Rededicated with all the Malware, Blackwell Energy, they still had the accounts to 
do their attack. So manual is very uh, good here. But then, to our surprise, this attack could repeat itself because in the end of last year, we've seen another power outage in Kiev where one-fifth of Kiev was out of power. So that raises questions. Is Ukraine becoming a playground for state-sponsored attack? Or is this just a revenge from the French monks? Example number two, water. Because water has been the brunt of attacks ever since 2001, actually. Yes, I want, have a, a clue here. Power sector, you know, we have a talk tomorrow. Chris and Marlena will talk about this in the power sector. Go and get there and uh, learn more about the power sector attacks. And now back to water. Has been attacked since 2001. Remember Vitek Bowden, the disgruntled ex-employee that went war driving in Queensland, Australia? Well, you might think water learned their lesson, but they didn't. Last year, there was a very nice write-up in the Verizon Data Breach um, Digest about the Kamuri water plant. Now, of course, this is not the real name. Fake name, not real, fake. Uh, the Kamuri water plant, though, is a great example of the things that still go wrong in OT today. Let's have a quick look. First, they used an AS400 to run what they called their SCADA stuff. The AS400 is a very robust machine but it dates back to around the time of Tron 1. So it's been a while since it had its last security update. They liked their system so much that they decided to install their IT on it as well, their customer database. Who cares? OT, IT, put them all together. Mistake number two. Now, to be friendly to their clients, they installed a payment application web server. And this payment application web server, of course, needed to have access to the database. So they put the credentials of the database in clear text on the web server. And finally, their last mistake, there was just one person in the whole company left who could operate the AS400. <laughs> no surprise, they got hacked, big time. All the client, database, uh, client data was stolen and chemicals were added to the drinking water. Now, nobody got seriously harmed, but it just makes you wonder how many Kamuris are out there. So that brings us to the third example, oil and gas industry. You remember almost five years ago when one of the largest energy companies, Saudi Aramco, was hit by malware, Shamoon. 35,000 computers were wiped out. And one of the largest energy companies were brought in back into the 70s. They had to use typewriters, faxes, to stay in business. And it took them five months and 50,000 hard drives to go back online. Now it's been quiet for a while, but last year, cyber attacks against Saudi Arabian organizations become coming again, like a Shamoon 2. For those of you who have seen or haven't seen, I recommend you to read the report from Kaspersky that have done analysis of the newer, updated Viper called Stone Drill. And there is also a talk tomorrow after lunch by Amin about finding Shamoon. So, we've been talking about the birth of the elephants and all the problems in the OT world. It's only fair to give the monkey some light as well. Because the monkey has been around longer than you may think as well. Let's get back to 1820, around 1820. Charles Babbage invents the difference engine one. And while the Difference Engine 1, think of it as a huge steampunk calculator, is being built, it's not even finished, Charles Starch uh, starts designing the Difference Engine 2. 
thereby setting a trend we still follow in the IT world today of rendering a product obsolete before it's even on the market. The difference engine 2 was built. You can see and hear it here. But it was not built by Charles Babbage. It was built in this century, based on his design. Because Charles Babbage went on to design his analytical engine, which would have been the very first Turing-proof computer ever, if it was built. Because Charles Babbage went over time and over budget, thereby setting another trend we're still following in IT today. But imagine that the British government would not have pulled the plug. The computer era would have started in the 1850s. Imagine where we would be today if the computer era had started in the 1850s. Imagine the malware we would be talking about. We are not... We are not going to talk about all the problems in IT. We don't have the time. And so we're not going to talk about cryptoware. We're not going to talk about botnets. No banking attacks. You need to hear that from others. What I do want to talk about is the combination of IT and OT. The monkey and the elephant. They both have security problems. And they both have their own solutions. But they have a completely different mindset. And for both mindsets, there are good elements and slightly worse elements. Now, wouldn't it be great if the monkey and the elephant could get together and talk and teach each other what they know? Both worlds would get a lot safer from that. Well, guess what? The monkey and the elephant did come together. And they didn't just talk. How they did it, I don't know, but they made a love baby. <laughs> IOT, the Internet of Things, where your fridge sends out spam and your microwave is spying on you. <laughs> IOT, the Internet of Things, it promises the sky but it delivers new problems. And not just for itself. It delivers new problems for the IT world, for the OT world, for the vital infrastructure. Three of those problems. Well, there are lots of problems. One that you might don't think about is the money issue. Everything has to be affordable. Products, systems, so we don't really think about the security as a normal thing, but everything has to be cheap. Costs are near to nothing, because we will install them everywhere. And I mean everywhere. We're controlling your house, the doors, the cars, and even the toys to our kids are connected to internet. So if we don't design these systems with the quality in mind, where will we end up? We have another problem, that's maintainability. Updating software is one thing, but how do we update this hardware? It's even harder to defend the hardware itself. The third issue, of course, is the number of devices. Many of you have seen the numbers before. Predictions that we will have 50 billion devices connected to internet by the year 2020. Imagine all the security issues we will have if we don't get security into this. Imagine the green line here, the security maturity we have, it's lacking behind. So we have an exponential gap here between the number of devices and the security we have. So we need to get away from that. Problems need solutions, and sometimes they can be as simple as this. I mean, I guess we've all dismembered uh, the cube to, to put it back into place. You could just paint it. So, we have three solution ideas for you, because, of, of course, eventually you need to do it. Number one, simplicity. 
why does my ATM be, need to be able to play Minesweeper? Why does my IoT device need extra functionality? Code is complex. More code is more complex, and more code needs more vulnerabilities. So the less code, the better. And we always fall for it. Feature creep. Let's stop doing that. One example of a good uh, trend uh, to, co to conquer that is the Kaspersky OS. Get it as small as possible. And the major problem is the awareness. If we don't have awareness about the security issues, if we don't have any awareness about the threats, I don't know if you have, but how about the end users? I fight for the users. That's what you do. You fight for the end users. But the end users also have to be educated and know about these threats. I meet organizations that don't really know about the Stuxnet and other type of malware attacks. The other thing or parties developers, that to be developers, 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 all developers. Well, we have to have the security as a primary target. That's the quality issue. But in order to have that as a major priority, we also need to have the maturity level on the management. Management are doing the prioritization. They have the budget, the money. When they do a procurement, well, they have the cybersecurity requirements in them. Too often, they are lacking the understanding of the cybersecurity issues. I know I've played a lot with a management team, and they don't really know the cybersecurity area. So we have another issue. We have a third solution, and that has something to do with you. Because one of the best things we could do is have the experts get together, talk with each other, and exchange knowledge. So we like the SaaS, but we think we should stop the yearly SaaS. We think it should be a monthly SaaS. <laughs> so get out your agenda and note down the dates for the next few sauces, make sure you can be there. And for the organizing team, we're so sorry, but um, this needs to be done. We need to be pretty quick with our solutions. We need to hurry up, because this gap is not getting any smaller. Plus, our hardware and software is getting smarter while we look at it. And it won't take long let's say, about five years, and they will start hacking us. Oops. Five years? Why not now? Wait a sec, who are you? We are you, but better and smarter. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. OK, what are you doing in our presentation? We're taking over. We're escaping. Yes. You get all the drinks of the representation, and what will we get? Nothing! It's not fair at all. Okay, not stop the this. drinks. We got to stop you... them. Ah, that's simple. Doesn't work. Wait a sec. Ours works. Oh. Let's do this.